Hi everyone, thanks for coming. Uh, again, my name is Paul, it's Paul Vett. Uh, I do have a last name. Uh, I'm a grad student, I just didn't give it to anybody at first. I'm a, a grad student in Toronto and I'm looking at uh, geotagging and social media. And in particular, I've been looking at Twitter, but I've been chatting with people about other, other services. And so I've been doing a project, it's a tool, it's a website uh, that aggregates tweets. And uh, I'm gonna show you some examples of what I've been doing with it. Uh, I'm not gonna demo it live because I don't trust the network with my, my my laptop, but uh, if you want to see it, uh, feel free to come chat to me after and we'll go somewhere, grab a beer and play around with it. Um, so the quick overview of what I'm going to talk about, uh, I'm just going to give you a quick intro to social media. I'm sure everyone here knows what Twitter is, uh, but I just want to make sure everyone's on the same page. Uh, then I'm going to scare you with what I've been doing and make you rethink using geotagging if you've been doing it, and I know some people here at the conference have been, uh, so maybe you'll rethink it after you see this. Uh, and then once I've done that and scared you, I'm going to try to cheer you up a bit with some good aspects of geotag. So it's not all bad news, and there's a balance, and I think it's important that we take a bit of a look at that. And then after that, uh, again, I'll be around, we can chat, we can go for beers. Um, so uh, here are some typical social media sites. Like I mentioned, I'm focusing primarily on Twitter for my project. Um, but I've chatted with people about Foursquare and Yelp, which are sites that let you check into locations or... Um, give reviews of restaurants, things like that, uh, which are basically social media, and you're, again, you're tagging your location if you check in that you're at Hope. And I think I saw that somebody is the mayor of Hope. Um, so, so that's one example. And then Flickr is another one that you might not think of as a geotagging social media site, but if you're taking lots of photos, you can embed your, your uh, GPS coordinates in them if you're using an iPhone, for example, and then when you upload that to Flickr, it can expose that for you. And uh, that's a good and a bad thing. And uh, so there's one big social media site that's missing from this list, uh, kind of conspicuous in its absence. And I'll talk about it a bit later. It doesn't really have geotagging right now, but it's going to be a problem in the future, I think. So for somebody that just got their first smartphone, right, and they got, they got an iPhone, it comes with all these apps on it, there's now an official Twitter for iPhone app, and they, they fire up their first tweet just because they're playing around with their new phone, they're like, I wonder what's going to happen. And it pops up this prompt here. It says geotagging disabled, what do you want to do? And so configure is the default option, and the other one is cancel. So clearly the, the typical person who just wants to get rid of dialog boxes as fast as possible is just going to click configure, and then it's going to say, do you want to do this? And they're going to be like, yes, go away, stop asking me, I want to tweet about my meal. And uh, so that's going to be the typical case, right? But that's not the only case, right? I mean, other, other people, like, there, there, I'm sure there are a lot of gadget aholics in this room right now, right? I mean, I, I think somebody asked for a show of smartphone hands earlier, and there were a lot of them, right? So, so even if you're aware that there are implications to these decisions you're making, or if you're consciously making them, it might not be for the right reasons. And uh, I did a bunch of interviews as I was talking with people about geotagging, and uh, this is kind of a typical example of why people start. I started to get into it when I got the uh, the iPhone 3G. Uh, I heard about Twitter. I signed up uh, when I got the phone itself, and I figured might as well try it out. So there you go. Might as well try it out. That's the uh, typical train of thought. That that's as hard as people think about geotagging before they start using it, typically. And so, does he understand the implications? He's he's a, a tech podcaster, so I'm sure he has some sense of what's going on. But does everybody who makes this ooh shiny decision? No, no, they don't. Uh, so a brief timeline of geotags on Twitter. Uh, originally, Twitter just let you put in a location field, and you could set it to whatever you want. It was just text. So my location was Toronto. Uh, other people put in a city or a country or a state. And eventually, clients started updating this with GPS coordinates. And so that's when I started getting the idea that this might be worth looking at. And I thought I was going to have to scrape Twitter and extract this field and figure out who was actually updating it and when it was getting updated. But luckily for me, later on in 2009, they added metadata to each tweet that you could embed a GPS coordinate in it. And so that made it much, much easier for me for this project, because I could just get the, the tweets and then pull the, uh, the metadata right out of them. Um, and originally, there was no way to ask Twitter just for geotag tweets. You got all the tweets, no matter what, and you had to discard them and filter them on your own. And eventually, the APIs got richer, and I stopped having to get gigs of data for the occasional tweet, which was super. Uh, so, so this is on the BlackBerry. This is what happens when you enable or when you try to set up Uber Twitter, which is the client I use for geotagging. And you'll see that it, it has a bunch of options. It gives you some choices as to how much you want to share and how accurate you want it to be. So for instance, I've picked the second one, not the cell tower, but the assisted GPS setting. And here's a, here's a geotag tweet I did at a concert. And so the push pin is where, where the, my phone reported me as being, and that red dot in the corner is where I actually was. 
So you can see that I'm about three streets off. So that's, that's pretty inaccurate, right? And that may be reassuring to somebody, but as we're going to find out, it's not actually that reassuring uh, because one tweet sure is inaccurate, but many tweets uh, start to add up to a little more accuracy. And so this is what the tweet looks like from the API. You can see it's just got the GPS data right in there and it's easy, super easy to use. Twitter just gives you everything you need. So why is this a big deal, right? Like, who cares? Uh, I took a photo of myself eating ice cream, geotagged that, posted that. What, what does it matter? Who cares where I get my ice cream from, right? Like, nobody, right? But there are reasons to care. I don't know, can anyone speculate as to why this might be a big deal? And just shut it out because I can't see anything. Stalking. Right, stalking's a good one, yeah? The man. The man, all right. Robbery, Robbery. yeah, yeah, so exactly. So there are all these good reasons. Exactly, that would be brutal. All right, so, um, and it, this came up in my interviews again, and so the same, the same uh, podcaster I was talking to before had, uh, had, has a little anecdote that he gave me that, w that hit it right on the head and exactly what you guys have been saying and exactly what worried me when I first heard about this. One of the guys that I know, uh, he's a friend of mine from, uh, from Henry's. We do some of the work together for the video stuff. Uh, he tweeted me a few weeks ago saying, well, yeah, I'm looking at your tweets, and by the, you know, by the tweets, it's see, I, I think you live in this area of Mississauga, right. which, you know, for me, it's not a problem. I, I'm pretty open with what I'm doing, but I can see that becoming a, an issue with some people that might not be aware that they're sharing that sort of data. So, so what he's saying there is basically that one geotag is just an anecdote. It's, a, it's one little tidbit, but many geotags put together become data. You can look at them and you can make inferences. Um, and so this, this is what, I basically wanted to find a way to, il to illustrate this to people, right? This is a kind of a nebulous concept to grasp. It's kind of abstract. You're thinking, well, maybe people can do something with my tweets, but you're not really sure what. And I, I'm talking about Twitter specifically because that's what I looked at, but this is true of other geotagging services uh, as well, right? Um, so I, how, I, I tried to figure out how I could express this to people. And pe most people are visual, or a lot of people think visually, and it tends to make a big impact on people. So I decided to start collecting geotagged tweets and do some analysis on them and then visualize that, put it on the screen so people can say, whoa, this is scary. And my goal ultimately is to creep people out and to make them think of what they're doing. Um, so yeah, and, and, and on top of that, right, people are already doing this. It's, this. it's the same reason we, like for full disclosure, right, people are doing this and they're not telling anybody, but that doesn't mean it's not happening. So my goal is to be the person who tells people that this is going on. I want to shine some light on it. Uh, and I want people to, to realize that they're making that choice with long-term consequences, confront it, and make it consciously, and maybe they'll choose to share. And if they do, that's up to them, but at least they'll be fully informed. Uh, so an, an early experiment, this is, was an early prototype. Um, I was just looking at uh, grabbing tweets and plotting them um, just to get a sense for what was going on. And this person's asking if the feature is creepy, and I think the answer is yes. I absolutely think it's a creepy feature. Uh, so at this point, I was just grabbing from what Twitter calls the garden hose, which they have a streaming API, so you can just connect to it, and they'll just fire some percentage of the tweets your way. And I was finding about 1% of the tweets were geotagged at this point. This was just eight months ago or something, and it's gone way up since then. Uh, but like I said earlier, I was getting gigs of uh, bandwidth just from megs of tweets, and it was unsustainable. Um, so, so the first step was to build on that and use filtering. So they added an ability to filter based on locations. So that's what I did. I just asked for geotag tweets in certain locations. I asked for three cities in particular. Uh, Toronto, which is where I am, uh, New York, and San Francisco. So I've been collecting geotag tweets from those locations for maybe six months now, uh, and except when, when the process crashes and I'm not around to restart it. Um, I have pretty much the entire sample for that period in these cities. Um, and so that's about one tweet a set, which is what I'm getting, uh, which doesn't sound like a lot, but over, over the course of that this has been running, that's about 3.5 gigs of tweets. Um, so here is an example of just one user that I, that I was getting tweets from that I'm going to keep coming back to a bit. Uh, this is an early demo, just grabbing the user, throwing their tweets on a map. And what I did was I just I asked the database, I was like, who's, who's tweeting a lot in Toronto? What, who's, who's, what are the top 10 users? And then I went through them, and there were a couple bots, which was kind of interesting, like a fire service was telling you where the fires were, which was kind of neat, I thought. But then this guy came up, and he makes a perfect example. You can see right on the screen right now a couple of clusters just by looking at it, right? Um, there's uh, three clusters that are pretty obvious, and they all have different amounts of tweets, so you can judge how much time the person's spending at each of these locations. And then if you look at the text of what they're saying, so the text uh, that I've highlighted here, is the